We've got two more talks now. Um, Murray. Uh, Murray is going to tell us about uh, bots um, again, and it's going to be about how to, to create your bot. Um, his company um, is creating a tool named Chatty People, and he's been in the bot industry for some time now. And the reason why we you will like also um, Murray is the way we, we chose this talk was about um, making bots for everyone. And we think that very soon everybody will have, will want to build a bot or to have a bot running somewhere. And we uh, definitely need a platform for that. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, whether yeah, you're a developer or not a developer. And that's a big concern and uh, how to integrate things together. Then Murray is from New York and is ready to start almost. <laughs> uh, how many of you are developers here? Okay, who's not a developer and wants to create a bot? Okay, who has created more than three bots? Whoa, okay. I owe you, okay, you've come to me, I give you a, a prize for that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thank you for having me here today. So I'm not a developer originally. I'm an entrepreneur and a marketer. So I come at this from a different perspective and I wanna share that different perspective uh, with you. My company is Chatty People. We're a platform to enable anyone to create chatbots. And we're very much focused on um, the user experience, interactivity, and business cases rather than uh, uh, some other platforms which are maybe more focused on, uh, on the development side. Um, so who am I? Um, I? I'm a contributor to Forbes, an entrepreneur. I have a big social uh, following, and I'm very much used to building content and interacting with audiences on a mass scale. So what is a chatbot? Well, as far as I'm concerned, a chatbot is, is you speaking to a computer. Um, they are, as we've heard, on uh, many different platforms, uh, from Alexa right the way through. Um, what can they do? And that's what I'm interested in, more than the uh, technology behind them. Well, yes, you can do, use them to or do simple things like um, ordering food, um, booking services. Why are they so interesting? Why are we here? Why do we care about them? And we've heard uh, from the presentation before that that's because the, the number of people using uh, chatbots, uh, using uh, messaging platforms is, is growing really fast. And I believe Slack is growing faster than uh, Facebook was when it's at this time um, in its space. And obviously, that's why uh, uh, Cisco has launched Spark. Um, as you, you may or may not know, WeChat in China, you can, use, you can use WeChat for pretty much anything. You don't need other applications. And from a marketing perspective, the reason why people are interested in, and I focus very much on uh, Facebook chatbots, is because think you in order to get someone to your app, you have to get them to download an app. Less apps are being downloaded now than ever before in, for, for the average user, and they're deleting them faster than ever before. Whereas Messenger, the other, these other major platforms are staying around. So the reason you want to build into these platforms is because they're there, they're sticky, and the consumers are going to keep them. They're not going to delete them. And it's easy once people start, once your users start to use them, it's easy to get your customers or your business people to use them. It's not trying to download some other clunky thing. Your staff don't want to say, well, I ha why do I want to have this my, my company's app on my phone? No, I already use this platform. I am here, and I'm going to use it. Um, as I say, Facebook, all the other platforms have seen the dollar signs. How do you make money out of Messenger? You make money out of Messenger by enabling commas in it, by enabling it to do smart things. 
So I was at the uh, F8 um, Facebook uh, conference recently, and they talked about some of the ways people are using them. Rogers is the biggest is a biggest telecoms company in Canada. They've increased customer satisfaction by 65% by enabling people to uh, to connect them with bots via bots. Why are they doing that? Well, it enables them to uh, provide more customer service to people that want high quality customer service while enabling them to service more people and get quick answers to questions they're being asked. A lot of the time, when you want to speak to a company, it's the simple things that you want. You want to know what your plan is, what your, what your bill is, how to, how to pay that bill. By using chatbots, you can actually uh, answer all those questions very quickly in real time. They don't need to speak to your agents. And then your agents, your staff, can get on with the really valuable things, the, re the things that they come to your company for. And you can provide great customer service. And that's the same internally as externally. Activision created a um, role-playing game uh, to go along with the launch of their, uh, their new um, game when it came out. And they got 6 million messages in 24 hours on the launch. So it's not something that's just for a small community. Don't think that this is just something that your dev team are going to be interested in. It's not something that just a small minority are interested in. This is something that uh, your whole company is going to be interested in. And think about this as being as transformative to your business as the internet was. How, is your, how are bots going to transform your business as a whole? And don't think about it just as the bot. Uh, T-Mobile, you can now buy a phone, you can buy a plan, you can change a plan all through bots. So yes, um, with lots of the bots which are discussed here, it's for enterprise. But I think just having bots within your enterprise, training your team, training your staff about how they interact is going to be important because they're also going to need to know how that's going to affect things externally. And you're also going to need to think, OK, we're going to have these external facing bots that are going to be interacting with our customers. How are you going to take what's happening with there in real time and reflect that within uh, uh, bots internally? Subway, you can pre-order, buy, um, and sometimes to have the, uh, the sandwiches delivered. How does that affect the whole digital transformation for the company? How is it going to be the same with enterprise uh, software? Absolute Vodka. You can take a voucher to a bar. You can uh, redeem the voucher from the chatbot at the bar. And they increased um, redemption rates just by using chatbots. So wrong way. Um, so there are, I see chatbots in two ways. There are AI chatbots, and there are scripted chatbots. I'm going to strongly recommend, although you may hear a lot about uh, AI, that really, initially, you focus on uh, scripted chatbots. And I'm going to give you the examples, and you know why. Um, the problem with chatbots is that uh, Facebook launched its wit. It got to 70%, um, answering 70% of the conversations. The problem is 70% is not good enough for most of the time. We've just heard from Alexa. They're doing amazing things. And you are very happy to bought all your groceries with Alexa. But and Alexa, right now, you might order your Starbucks from your, uh, from your car with Alexa. But you wouldn't put your child in the car and ask Alexa and give voice commands to Alexa to draw, drive your, car, your child to work. Well, think about when you're dealing with customers, when you're dealing with mission-critical uh, issues for your company. Would you really let a chatbot have all of that from day one? Um, for those of you who don't know, that's a Dalek. They had wheels. Chairs was their biggest challenge in the universe. Um, giving you, obviously, the example, uh, the Microsoft example, where the Microsoft bot, bot was taught to be a racist very quickly. What could possibly go wrong with having AI drive your conversations in your company? So what I would suggest to you is start with simple scripted uh, bots. Build scripted bots for most of the common scenarios you can think of, and then monitor those conversations and see where you go to from there. Find out the things that aren't answered. Have a really simple, smart ways to get to humans that can fix those uh, the, the problems that you that arise with bots. 
So what about uh, bots and your company, bots and any company? Think about this as you're building any application. What do users need? What's the contextual experience that you're trying to deliver with the bot? Don't think, I'm going to build a bot that does everything. Think, what exactly is this bot going to resolve? And then build a bot that meets that. Build a simple bot, get it to do simple tasks. Test it, publish it, promote it, get everyone using it, and then iterate on that. There are many platforms. Chatty People is a really simple platform. We, right now, we just focus on Facebook, although we're building out for the other platforms. There's many chat, chat fuel, and as we've heard, uh, uh, BotKit, which provide really great platforms for you to do this. Once again, I would suggest don't think about, OK, I'm going to go and spend months and build my own complicated platform. Use a tool, use a platform, build something simple, find out how it works, what it works, what are the user cases for this. These are simple enough that our platform and lots of the other platforms are built simple enough, and there are, there are ways to um, enable anyone, even the marketing teams who I know cause trouble for lots of marketing, for lots of technology people, to build chatbots, try it, and then give you the feedback, having had those rounds of iterations. Uh, think about what their limitations are. Uh, right now, give them a name. Make it, make it human. The reason that Chatty People has a woman's face, the reason I call it Chatty People, is because I want to make it as friendly as possible. Bots are still something that a lot of people are afraid of. Give it a profile. What's your chatbot going to look like? What's its name going to be? Give it something that people want to engage with. And yes, they can message, they can upload photos, you can use them for different types of thing. Think about the types of language that your chatbot's going to use. Is it going to be very formal? Do you want to build a formal chatbot, even internally? Make it friendly. Have it say hi, or howdy, or, or give it the personality of your business. Think about that not just for what happens to happen externally, but think about how that's going to affect things internally, whether the teams really want to engage in it. Say that it's a bot. The worst thing that you can do is, is have this open up in a messenger platform, whatever the platform is, and have people think it's a human. Because then their expectations will be totally different. Always make sure that they have a really easy option, as I've said, to get to a human. Think about when you deal with uh, lots of people. The closest thing lots of us have to dealing with bots right now where we really understand it's a bot is a telephone system. So often it's great to deal with a telephone system. The worst thing is that you can't get to a human being. Find problems and enable. P don't also don't tell teams this is going to replace people. Tell them it's going to replace the problems that are easily fixed. The, give them the answers that are easily um, that are easy to solve, and then enable those teams. Empower them to have the extra time to deliver a higher quality of service. Also, things are going to go wrong, so you might need more resources for your bot rather than having less instantly. Don't say, I'm going to deliver this bot next month, and we're going to fire half the, uh, the, the team de delivering this problem. You're actually probably going to need more people to, to resolve the issues. Think about where your, find out where your users are already engaged. Don't try and move everyone over to one platform and say, this is where you're going to engage. If they're using Slack, if they're using Facebook Messenger, if they're using groups, find out where they are and build your technology stack for those conversations rather than trying to force something over to something they don't want to use. And then I'm going to give some really simple examples. So this is a text-based uh, uh, chatbot set up for an online invoicing company. It's externally fo facing. Their, their biggest question was people message them and say, ask for frequently asked questions. They just wanted to be a bot to be able to push people over to frequently asked questions. It's better to have buttons, but they wanted to have lots and lots of options. And on that pl platform, in order to give lots of options, you had to have uh, text types. You, within that, you need to be able to in, uh, include, if you're just going to have scripted context, you need to include spelling mistakes, et cetera. And when someone asks for, um, asks for uh, if, uh, frequently asked questions, it just gives them a link. Now, that's a really, really simple like first attempt at it. 
But that was great because it told them actually most people just come to them, ask the freaky arts questions, and then go to the link. So they were able to give more input into that. But that was just first iteration, try it with a platform, don't do anything complicated, get started and find out what happens next. This is an example of a bar or restaurant. Most people just want to know what are the opening hours, uh, what's the menu, can I book a table? It's really simple, but they got that just from speaking to their customers. They just said, okay, what are your customers phone in for, for most? Find that information, deliver it to them. I say this is stage one for chatbots. There will be much more complicated chatbots, but I would say just get started now, build something simple, prove the use case, find the conversations. Um, this is a chatbot for a uh, for uh, in, uh, a uh, online celebrity. Here they use buttons because most of their users are really simple, so buttons is the easiest way to go for them. And what are they trying to do? Their objective is to get people to subscribe to uh, to receive new videos for them. Uh, I spoke to someone and I had to include this because no presentation is is uh, uh, true without having cats on the internet at this stage. They don't have a chat bot, they have a cat bot. It meows back to you. It's super popular and it just shows you the fact that if you can provide something that's novel, it doesn't have to be really complicated to engage people's uh, ideas. And with small small companies or small projects, you can often get started by giving it some personality, give it meaning, give it interest, get them engaged, and then uh, work forward with them. So I was asked to, uh, asked to ask a couple of questions. Um, are we going to hate using chatbots or are we going to love them? And I think it comes down to the scenario. When you want to buy a car, you don't want to speak to a car salesperson. You ideally, you want to be able to look it up online, you want to be able to uh, order it, buy it, and you would love to do all of that without speaking to a human being. That's the perfect scenario for buying a car. If you want emergency medical help, you don't want to speak to a robot. You want to speak to a human very quickly. So just think about why are you doing this and how are you directing uh, people with it. Also, how will they be helpful? Obviously, bots will be helpful to do manual tasks, but at the same time, um, as human beings, I think chat, chat bots and bots uh, in the future will be there to assist us and maybe even accompany us with the tasks that we're doing and support and motivate us with those tasks. I'm Murray Newland, CEO of uh, Chatty People, and I'll be around later if anyone would like to talk. Thank you. <laughs>